Okay, good morning, guys. This is our first official full day in New York City. We are heading down the elevator because we are going to the Ellis Island Hard Hat Tour. So we are heading out to catch the subway over to Battery Park to catch the ferry over to Ellis Island. That sounded like a whole lot, and it is, but that is what we are doing now. So we are walking out of the hotel room and headed that way. I'm hoping to be able to stop and get me some breakfast because I'm hungry. Um, that's about it. Okay guys, so we went to the whole wrong ferry terminal. So we missed our ferry. We're actually 15 minutes away from the ferry we're supposed to be at. And y'all, I am sweating something serious and tired from rushing to the wrong location. But it's okay, we're on vacation. We're not gonna stress about it. But I can see Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty over there. So I wonder if I should just like swim. I'm kidding, I can't swim. So we are now on the ferry. I don't even think y'all can hear me, but I made it to the ferry. So we just stopped at the Statue of Liberty, stop on the ferry. I apologize, I was not able to capture more of our journey to the ferry, but it was hectic. We were rushing, we missed the first ferry, but we're here, it's okay. Now we are at the Statue of Liberty, getting in ready to head towards Ellis Island. All right guys, so we are walking around Ellis Island. We have tickets to the hard hat tour. However, that doesn't start in front of the 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna be walking around, looking at different things and showing you guys some of the things that I see. And then we will head to the hard hat tour, which is basically the exploration of the undeveloped part of Ellis Island. So there's no renovations, nothing. It is the raw uncut visual of what it looked like for them. Um, so I will see all of you. So we have started our tour and we are being led by Mr. Jim. He is so nice. He asked what people on this tour do. I let them know my profession as a therapist and he's gonna show me the therapy wing and also told me after the immigration portion shut down, Ellis Island was a psychiatric hospital. I did not know that. 10 million immigrants uh, walked down this hallway. Got a kind of card like this and this is the inspection. Uh, this thing over here has got a fancy name. This is called the extractor. All that is is the spin cycle in the washing machine when it was industrial strength. The way they dried the clothes was through this machine here. This is called a mangle. Okay. And a mangle uh, works like a printing press. You pass the
And the big, the key thing about a pavilion is this is not one building. This is a collection of 16 different buildings. Um, there are eight of these um, uh, two-story uh, pavilions, which is. particular elevator is much deeper than it is wide, which means that this is basically built for transporting a stretcher and a patient next to them, or a gurney, or whatever. If you're serving dinner, you need to cook it somewhere. This is where they cook it. And this thing here, uh, have you ever used the word icebox for a refrigerator? Well, this is really an icebox. They actually had an ice manufacturing plant over the main building and they would transport blocks of ice to cool all the vegetables in the milk. Uh, this over here is a rain hood and if you look over there you'll see the outline of it. It was hanging there and then all of the beams there were starting to rot so they had to fix that so they took it down. But you can see from one end to the other that's where the stoves were. I mean, this is a pretty small room but we know that they prepared meals for everyone in the hospital, which could be as many as 300 patients. And there were about 45 staff. I'll show you, this is probably the most significant. This is one of the pavilion hospital rooms that has been relatively unchanged. So this goes back to the original construction in 1911. There are 16 of these, and when the place was built, they all look like this. Um, the nurses were supposed to all live in the ward where they worked, but they needed the rooms for other purposes, and so the, uh, the nurses wound up living in the dormitory. Up in, in the main building. This is a kitchen where they had a dishwasher and they prepared special meals for people who had unique illnesses that required like a milk diet or something like that. This is the bathroom, which I mean quite literally. Baths were some of the medicinal treatments that were they used here. Um, and this over here, this is the nurse's station. And the key feature here is it's got an enormous window that the nurses could close. And they could sit in this room here, close the external door, and they could see everything going on on the ward, but they did not have to physically breathe the air with the people. Yeah, this is a picture. And the thing is, if you look at this photograph, okay, it doesn't look, uh, but if you look at the wall, uh, all the way down there on the right, you'll see a very light uh, plaster square. There's another one just above the floor. There's two, two more in that corner over there. And there's four more of those pla of plaster squares there. Though that plaster covers up a whole ventilation system that goes all the way through the roof, the ceiling, and through the walls here and terminates. It's a 12 cubicles, okay? And so, remember, I was told this was a TV ward. I want you to just go in, into either of those cubicles on the door, give it a knock, and the other thing, and see what materials they have, and look at the back side of the door, and let me know what you see that's a little different. That stuff, and they had to dispose of it in these sinks that were not the same as a place where they'd wash their hands and get their water from. There were also treatments for tuberculosis that, were, that used water, and they did not want the fresh water and the contaminated things to mix. These are the isolation wards, and these were, the purpose of these was to take care of patients who had multiple infections. And multiple infections means that you were really sick, and a lot of people. Dining room kitchen on each floor. There's bed, four bedrooms for this family on this side. There's three over here. But the problem was they all shared that central stairway, which had to be awkward. And then the other thing was the staff who worked here were not immigrants. I mean, they, they, they were immigrants, but they had been what was called landed and then this was her kitchen. There's a great view from here, but we've covered it up and we have destroyed it. So come on for here. <laughs> Uh, okay. This is her kitchen. I, I have no idea how anybody feels about Harry Potter these days, but this is a real room under the stairs. Oh, wow. So, check out the view here. 
All right, guys, so we just finished the hard hat tour here at Ellis Island. Basically, it is where you will tour the underdeveloped side of the island, where the hospital, all the mental health facilities, all the things like that. Now, I'm not gonna post anything that's going to be spoiling to the experience. So if you want to check it out, please make sure you come out here to New York, do the Ellis Island hard hat tour, and that money goes to the restoration of that side of the island, which is the Save Ellis Island. Uh, foundation so I'm gonna include the link down to that below as well so make sure you guys support that and the restoration of Ellis Island at the end of this um, Ellis Island tour I can definitely say that I feel like it was a hundred percent worth it like it is costly and more obviously it's free to get into Ellis Island itself um, so having to pay to do the hard hat tour is a, a it's some money um but i definitely think that that money was worth it because we definitely got a lot of information and it's for a good cause and i would definitely say that it's worth the money like all the stories you're hearing all the things you wouldn't have known just walking around ellis island